today's case study carrying on our CNS theme. Now today's case study revolves around dementia and acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Let's start. The question reads, the carer of one of your regular patients, 72 year old Mr. Dementia, enters the pharmacy. She tells you Mr. Dementia is getting quite confused lately, much more than usual, and the carer believes it may be a sign his Alzheimer's disease is getting worse. She tells you Mr. Dementia has also been getting quite agitated, although this is so, you know, more so irritating for her. So she told the GP who suggested to put him on some medication to calm him down. The carer hands you the following prescription. Identify the two drug therapy problems present. Now, Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia, thought to account for approximately two thirds of cases. Often it coexists with other dementia types. Now, if we you know, look at a quick breakdown of Alzheimer's disease, it's a neurodegenerative disorder to which there's no cure. And if we did, for instance, a post-mortem and we had a look at some you know, neuronal cells and looked at the brain, then usually what you see, so let's draw some neurons. Okay, so off drawing. You would have these deposits, you know, neurons, and these are what are known as beta amyloid plaques. And then eventually over time, you'll start to notice these neurofibrillary tangles come over time and they're the two characteristic you know traits that they noticed you know if they did a post-mortem and they had a look at the brain of patients with uh, you know Alzheimer's disease for instance now although you know other neurotransmitter systems are deficient in Alzheimer's disease patients so these may include a reduction in a serotonin for instance noradrenaline um, somatostatin or you know these could include other peptides and so on the cognitive impairment so that's the memory issues that are normally associated with dementia patients that most people normally think of and that we'll go on to in a bit the, the memory impairment correlates best with the loss of what we know we call cholinergic neurons in the basal forebrain or more specifically the reduction in acetylcholine and a decrease in certain acetylcholine you know synthesizing enzymes now as a side note we do have a decrease in you know many neurotransmitters as we age including a reduction in acetylcholine and you know this is why sometimes you may see in more elderly patients memory isn't as good as it once used to be we shouldn't assume that you know an elderly patient specifically has dementia and the amount of acetylcholine decrease that we see in a patient with Alzheimer's disease is much more significant now as a side note certain patients may be identified however as displaying what we call mild cognitive impairment and roughly speaking, about 50% of the patients that develop this will then go on to develop what we call Alzheimer's disease. So we should keep an eye on these patients, especially, and you know, monitor them and you know, see how they get on just to be able to catch this early. Now, coming back to the question, our first drug therapy problem is that Mr. Dementia is taking a diuretic. Now, with a diuretic, there's a risk of dehydration. And this can happen especially upon initiation and, and, and so on. But anyway, this can lead to confusion, fatigue, and ex actually exacerbate the patient's dementia sy symptoms. So in this case, Mr. Dementia's Alzheimer's disease. Now, if you think about this and, you know, zoom out, patients that are elderly not diagnosed with dementia may actually be identified as someone suffering from dementia when the underlying cause is actually the dehydration. So we have to be careful. Now, the patient here, Mr. Dementia, is most likely taking 
the diuretic as an antihypertensive, say for instance, hypertension, but we don't necessarily know. But it seems likely that's maybe what they're taking it for. And they're taking indapamide, which is actually a thiazide like diuretic. Now, as a side note, with you know diuretics, including thiazide like diuretics and thiazide diuretics, there are other side effects that can occur, for instance hyperglycemia, the high blood sugar, hyperuricemia, hyperkalemia, you know, disturbances, electrolytes, and so on. That puts Mr. Dementia at a greater risk of developing further comorbidities, especially as he is elderly, in taking certain other medication, like antipsychotics, for instance, that, you know, as a side effect themselves may cause you know hyperglycemia whack through you know weight gain and so on and so it's something to think about now back to the issue at hand the carer should be you know informed of the issue and it should be forwarded to the prescriber now according to guidance say you know for hypertension first line treatment for hypertension according to nice guidance that's a uk national guidance in patients over 55 years of age should be given a calcium channel blocker, specifically a dihydropyridine, for example, amlodipine or philodipine. Now, this is you know due to a reduction in renin production as we age. Renin, angiotensin, or dosterone, you know, based drugs may not be as effective. So a calcium channel blocker is normally given in these patients. Now this is just one option that could be discussed. There may be other reasons and we need to gather more information that we may, for instance, be able to get from the actual carer. And in the meantime, immediately the patient should be re referred and they should be assessed for the dehydration status, their consciousness and so on. And during the referral, they should be treated as, as appropriately. Now, the second drug therapy problem is that Mr. Dementia has been prescribed an antipsychotic, haliperidol in this instance, for a, what looks like apparent behavioural and psychological symptoms of dementia. And, you know, if we look in the question, we can see the carer tells us Mr. Dementia has been getting quite agitated. So it's most likely this agitation is what's being thought to be the behavior and psychological symptoms of dementia. Now, antipsychotics are normally reserved for those patients exhibiting more, you know, moderate to severe behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, often after non pharmacological, you know, therapies or strategies have been exhausted. This is due to the risk of side effects, in particular on data gathered that there's a 1% mortality risk in elderly dementia patients who've been administered, you know, antipsychotics for this reason. Now, based on the information given, it seems the clinician has not op opted for any non-pharmacological strategies. Um, Obviously, we don't fully know that. And it th this is the important part. It seems that the antipsychotic has been primarily given for the convenience of the carer, which you can see is written in, in the question, although this is more so irritating for her. So this may trigger, for instance, safeguarding issues in the back of our mind. And... This is something that should be, you know, flagged up with the prescriber both of these, uh, you know, issues with the mortality and potentially safeguarding protocols should be followed uh, depending after extracting more information and, you know, going forth uh, forward. Now, with both drug therapy problems identified, let's move on to the patient query portion of uh, the case study. While sorting out the drug therapy problems identified, the carer also lets you know Mr. Dementia has been complaining of sleeping problem and asked to buy some promethazine tablets. Now, as stated previously, the destruction of cholinergic neurons is part of the underlying pathology seen in patients with 
Alzheimer's disease and obviously that destruction leading to a decrease in acetylcholine. Now, antihistamines, especially sedating antihistamines, they can cause anti-muscarinic side effects through blockade of muscarinic receptors. Now, if we put two and two together, we'll be able to tell that giving the carer, you know, promethazine for Mr. Dementia to take may actually exacerbate his Alzheimer's disease by further you know, decreasing acetylcholine levels, which may make, you know, the cognitive impairment worse and other symptoms and so on. So we can see that that's an issue. Now, on top of that, it may also be exacerbated by the, you know, drowsiness and confusion that can be caused by the drug, since it's the most sedating antihistamine. And this is especially worrisome, not only due to the effect on the patient's dementia, but also in case he falls, as elderly patients are more prone fractures you know which have a high mortality rate in elderly patients for example a neck of femur fracture or hip fracture so it's best to refer the patient in case there's an underlying reason also for mr dementia's insomnia is it a symptom of another condition like depression which can be a complication of dementia and so on i mean these are just a few things to think about and so a referral is mo mo most appropriate in this case now that wraps up today's case study if you found today's video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, making sure you hit the bell icon of course to keep updated on new videos.